What the heck? I thought it'd be a normal meal. But suddenly, my vision started getting fuzzy. My stomach was in knots. I broke into a cold sweat and I crumpled to the ground. My husband just sat there, no reaction. The last image I had was his smirk. Why? Why is he smiling like that? Did he? Drifting in and out, his voice broke through. Finally, it's done. I blacked out, not really getting his message. When I woke up, our relationship had shifted big time. My name's Kim, 30 years old. I majored in psychology in college and now work as a middle school counselor. Everyone's got some things they need to work on, whether it's a big or small, no matter the age. Issues might seem tiny to one person, but huge to someone else and the other way around. Back in college, I struggled mentally with social stuff, but found help with an amazing school counselor. She turned my life around, sparking a new dream in me. Before, I was aimless, but she inspired me to pursue counseling. I'm living that dream now and loving it. But it's not just the job. My husband, Dennis, adds to my happiness. We go way back to college days. We connected in a music club, got together at a reunion, and got married three years later. With our history, we're more friends than just a couple. He's always been my go-to guy. Now at 30, I'm married for two years, we're at the point of thinking about kids. But intimacy's been sparse lately, probably because he's been swamped with work. I can't let things slide. So I brought it up. Hey, Dennis, there's something on my mind. Got a sec? I caught him on a Saturday night after he'd been working. He let out a sigh and responded. What is it now? I pushed past his tone. So we're both 30, right? Don't you think we should talk about having kids? Why now? I get back, be from work, and this is what you hit me with? I just thought we should chat about it. Could you pick a better moment? Read the room. I didn't mean to. I'm not in the headspace for this conversation. Especially about this. He cut the conversation short with a deep sigh and left the room. This has been his M.O. lately. We used to talk through anything, no matter how tired he was. But now, he's ducking these talks. I've noticed a shift in him over recent months. Maybe his work, taking up our together time, is the culprit. But my efforts to reconnect seem pointless if he doesn't meet me halfway. I do want kids. But first, we've got to be on solid ground. The following day, he didn't get out of bed until the afternoon. Once he finally showed up in the living room, I tried again. Look, I'm sorry about yesterday, but we've been drifting apart. I was hoping we could get back to spending quality time together, like old times. From kids to this? Can't you see I'm buried in work? I know you're slammed, but working late every night and the weekends? It's a lot. Can't you clock out at a normal hour once in a while? 
Man, you never let up. You get why I'm doing this, right? For us. I'm grateful. Really, I am. But I'm working too. So you don't need to burn yourself out. Enough. Let's shelf this for now. With that, he snagged his wallet and phone and split. As the door shut behind him, I felt this tightness in my chest release and the waterworks started. Why? Why is he acting this way? I just wanted us to get back to how things were. His words echoed in my head as I cried, the tears just pouring out. That day, I sobbed like I hadn't in ages, and it was just the start of a much bigger storm. Morning greetings? Gone. If I said dinner was ready, he'd bail. My attempt to bridge our gap had backfired. Instead of getting closer, we grew even more distant. One weekend, with him off working again, I was left to my own devices. I opted for a house cleanup. I tackled the living room, our bedroom, and then his room, which was a mess. As I cleaned up his junk, I spotted a weirdly colored receipt under his dresser. What's this? A receipt? It was greenish and from a swanky French place I'd been raving about. I remembered that unique tinted receipt because someone posted about their dinner there online. Why did he have this? He never took me. The order was clearly for two, maybe three. I was sure he knew I wanted to have dinner there. Why keep it from me? A sinking feeling set in. Digging deeper, his trash yielded more two-person dining receipts. He'd been eating out often, and clearly with someone he didn't want me to know about. The dates matched his late nights at work. Had he been lying? Maybe he was seeing someone and just using work as a cover. My head swirled with doubts and my heart felt heavy. I had to ask him. When he got in around 11 that night, I jumped right in. Are you seeing someone? His eyes went wide, but he quickly laughed it off, saying, Seriously? You think I'm cheating? That's way out there. Then, explain these receipts. They're all for two. Who did you go out with? Just a work buddy. I pick up the tab because they're junior to me. Really? Why would I lie? Cheat on you? Come on. I hope that's true. His reaction felt off. Typically, he'd be upset. But now, he just gave a forced grin. He was up to something. So, I kept tabs on him. But he was on his toes, not slipping once. In fact, he flipped the script, acting super sweet, like in our early days. Kim, how about dinner tonight? I'll be home early, and let's hang out Saturday. Remember that cake you love? Got one for dessert tonight. It was like night and day from before. But his sudden niceness was definitely because I'd called him out. He was hiding an affair. Catching him in the act, though, was proving tough. While I was uh, mulling over my next move, he threw a curveball. Our anniversary's Saturday, right? I've got it all covered. Let's make it special. You're doing everything? Yeah. I've been a pain recently. 
I'll take care of everything. Wine, snacks, the works. That's sweet. But why the sudden plan? Just want to show you I care. Is that okay? I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Something fell off. To be on the safe side, I gave my folks a heads up, asking them to check in if they hadn't heard from me by Saturday night. Finally, our anniversary day came. Per Dennis's suggestion, I caught a movie after work. When I got back, the table was set with dishes and wine. Welcome home, Kim. Everything's set, he said, flashing an odd smile. I thanked him, but hesitated before sitting. The dishes smelled amazing, but I wasn't hungry. Aren't you eating? He asked, looking genuinely confused. I just shook my head. He smirked, then poured me a glass of wine. Forget the food for now. Try this wine. Got it just for you. Wait, the bottle was already open. I opened it earlier to let it breathe. Go on, have a drink. All right, thanks. It was strange how he kept pushing the wine. Suspicious, I faked a sip, then snuck a quick bite. Suddenly, everything went haywire. What the heck? I thought it'd be a normal meal. But suddenly, my vision started getting fuzzy. My stomach was in knots. I broke into a cold sweat, and I crumpled to the ground. And Dennis just sat there. No reaction. The last image I had was his smirk. Why? Why is he smiling like that? Did he? Drifting in and out, his voice broke through. Finally, it's done. What did he mean by done? What is he talking about? Desperate for answers, I tried speaking, but couldn't. He looked downright ecstatic, saying, You can join me now. Just us. No more distractions. We're together forever. Yeah, I love you too. In that moment, my love for him froze over. It clicked. He must have spiked the food. His plan was to harm me from the start. Before I could process this, darkness took over. Waking up, I found myself under a soft-hued ceiling. I heard my parents exclaim, Kim! Mom, Dad! Thank goodness, we found you out cold. We were so scared. Thanks for coming. Where's Dennis? They hesitated and looked to the side. I sat up, following my dad's gaze, and was shocked to see my injured husband beside an unknown young woman on the bed. My dad filled me in. Dennis tried to land you in the hospital with something in that wine. The woman is his secret girlfriend. The wine? Yeah. Doctors didn't find anything harmful in you. It seems you had a stress-caused ulcer. So the sharp pain wasn't his doing? No, just a strain of being with him. If you'd really drunk that wine, it could have been bad. Why does he look so rough? We got into it. Landed a couple on him. We're handing him to the cops soon. As my dad spoke up, Dennis's face went ghost white. In a sudden bout of desperation, he dropped to his knees, begging my dad. Hold on, isn't getting the police involved a bit much? I mean, Kim's alright. Excuse me? We all know 
what you tried to pull on our daughter. Acting clueless won't cut it. She's been through hell because of you. We've got that wine as evidence. Hand that over, and you're toast. Hold on. If this gets out, I'll lose my job. My family will suffer. Not our problem. You teamed up with her. Pointing at the mistress. And did this to our Kim. Unforgivable. My rattled husband then looked at me. His eyes big and pleading like a puppy left out in the rain. Please, I'll make it right. Name your price. So please. I'd made up my mind. No room for leniency for a guy who couldn't even muster an apology. I shrugged him off and shot back. Your money? Not interested. An I'm sorry would have been a start. Knowing I didn't have a child with someone like you? Dashed a bullet. Please, I'll apologize. Give me a chance. Too late. Whatever you say, the ship's sailed. Face the music, you jerk. And I doubt there'll be a welcome mat waiting for you after you're done doing time. No, help me out. As Dennis pleaded, the cops my dad had called showed up and carted him and his lover off. They both ended up behind bars. He got fired, and I got a lawyer, filed for divorce, and claimed damages. Not sure how long he'll be locked up, but I'm betting there won't be a place waiting for him when he's out. Frankly, he brought this on himself. He's gonna pay for what he did. Meanwhile, I quit my job to steer clear of any reminders of my ex. Moved to a neighboring state and landed a gig as a hospital-based clinical psychologist. From here on, it's all about me. I owe a ton to my folks for having my back that day. My plan is to take care of my parents and live my days in peace.